Today, we'll be looking at two films that share examples of bad physics in them. First, we'll examine Christopher Nolan's science fiction film Interstellar. Although the film succeeds in capturing accurate visualizations and depictions of hypothetical concepts such as wormholes, the film ignores a key principle of black holes. Your body would experience spaghettification, which is the vertical stretching and horizontal compression of objects into long, thin shapes because of the immense difference in gravity your body would be experiencing. Interstellar seems to bypass this issue, as you can see in this video clip. Goodbye, Dr. Brent. See you on the other side, Coop. See you there, Slick! Okay, Case. Nice reckless flying. Learn from the master. Ranger 2, prepare to detach. What? No! No! Cooper! Three. Cooper, what are you doing? Moon's third law. You gotta leave something behind. You told me we had enough resources for both of us. We agree to that. Ninety percent. Detach. Pushing the event horizon. Port side, dipping down beneath it. Go through it. Heading toward blackness. I'm visual. Using the program Space Engine, we can get approximate details about black holes and get theoretical numbers to further compare to Interstellar's supermassive black hole. The black hole, also called Sagittarius A, is the black hole our Milky Way galaxy orbits around. The mass from Sagittarius A is around 4.31 times 10 to the 6th solar masses and has a temperature around 24,740 degrees Fahrenheit. Kip Thorne, a theoretical physicist and executive producer on Interstellar, says that Gargantua has a solar mass of around 100 million. That's nearly 23 times the size of Sagittarius A. Assuming the temperature at Sagittarius' event horizon is accurate, we can solve to figure out the temperature at Gargantua's event horizon by solving the missing variable. By setting them up as fractions, we can cross multiply and figure out the temperature. By solving, we can determine that Gargantua's temperature at the event horizon is around 574,013 degrees Fahrenheit. Not only should Cooper suffer from the effects of spaghettification by crossing the event horizon, but he would also be subjected to an incredible amount of heat that would result in him being turned into ash. Next, we'll be looking at the inconsistencies in Thor Ragnarok. During the first 20 minutes of the film, the Asgardian god loses his hammer to Hela, the goddess of death. The issue with this is how easy it is for her to catch it without any repercussions. So he's gone. A shame I would have liked to have seen that. You must be Hella. I'm Thor, son of Odin. Really? You don't look like him. Perhaps we can come to an arrangement. You sound like him. Neil. I beg your pardon. Neil. 
for your queen? I don't think so. All right, pause. This shouldn't be possible, and here's why. Based on comic book statistics, Thor's hammer weighs approximately 42.3 pounds and can throw the hammer at approximately 11,265 meters per second. For comparison, bullets travel around 400 to 1200 meters per second. If we use the equation 1 half mass times velocity squared, we can figure out the total amount of joules Thor achieves when he throws his hammer. We can plug in the values of 19.2 kilograms and 11,265 meters per second to solve for joules, and then estimate the distance of 6 meters between Thor and Hela. If we then plug that into the formula work equals force times distance, we can solve to figure out the total amount of force exerted on her. Solving it, you get a total of 200 million newtons exerted overall. That's roughly half the amount of force produced from the biggest nuclear bomb ever detonated, the Tsar Bomba. The mushroom cloud would reach a peak of 32 kilometers into the sky. For comparison, the tallest mountain on Earth is Mount Everest, which is only 9 kilometers tall. The blast would be nearly 4 times taller, completely dwarfing the mountain. Anyone within a 50 kilometer vicinity would receive third degree burns and windows would partially shatter at 450 kilometers. An example of correct physics for Thor's hammer would be in Avengers Age of Ultron. Quicksilver tries to catch Thor's hammer as it passes by, but it's too heavy for him to pick up and it sends him flying in the same direction as the hammer. This correctly portrays Newton's second law as a higher force, which is Thor's hammer, overthrows a smaller force, that being Quicksilver. Much like Quicksilver, Hela should have been blown backwards, but rather she remained in the same spot without taking any damage. If Thor's hammer was thrown at something vital like your head, you could probably imagine the damages. But if you can't... For anyone's sake. And as always, thanks for watching.